This video is in response to a question that was uh, asked in the st one of the statistics channels on Reddit. And a user asked, if you have data in a lot of columns, and what you're really interested in is how many times does a particular number repeat, uh, so that you can figure out how many repeats there are, how could you do that in Excel? And so I thought about it a little bit, and here is my answer. And like a lot of solutions that you do in Excel, this is not going to be very elegant, but it will definitely work. So the user said, suppose I have three columns here, A, B, and C, and we have these numbers, and we want a sort of automatic way to look through the data and find uh, which numbers are repeating. He actually says he's not interested in which numbers repeat, but he just wants to know how many repeats there are. Uh, I'm going to do one better, and we can actually look to see uh, how many numbers repeat. So here's my method. So in this case, with this example, all we have are integers. And the integers, the smallest is 1 and the highest is 39. So if you know that the only possibilities for your numbers are integers, that makes the problem a little simpler because my method requires us to have a list of all the possibilities. So in order to make a list of the integers from 1 to, say, 40, that's pretty easy. We can just type over here 1, 2, and then highlight the 1 and the 2 and grab the little um, bottom right corner box there and drag it down, and we can get a list as long as we want. Now, suppose that you had uh, a more complicated situation where your numbers weren't necessarily integers. Uh, and also, what if you didn't want your list to include numbers that didn't actually appear over here in your list? What if you thought that was silly? Well, let me show you a way that you can get a list that would be a little better than this. And this will work even if you have uh, numbers with decimal points or, or things like that. My method is to use a um, pivot table here, insert pivot table. But before we do that, what we would want to do is create a mega list of all the data. So if you just want to copy and paste all of your data into one long, 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 long column, that will help us get a list of all of the unique values that appear in all of the columns. And to do that, we can just highlight this data, go to Insert, Pivot Table, and then a little box pops up asking you what data you want to use, and it's we've already selected it. So hit OK. And now to get a list of all of the unique numbers, here, let me make this a little smaller so you can see what I'm doing. OK, there we go. It has the, the title of our list of numbers. And you have to have a title for your, your long list of numbers. I called it mega list. I know that's really small and hard to see. I apologize. But take that mega list and drag it down into this box that says row labels. And what Excel will automatically do when you drop that into row labels is it's going to make a long list of all the unique values over here on the left. And then you can click over here and you can just, if you wanted to highlight, all those numbers and hit copy or control C and we could go back to our worksheet over here and instead of using a list of all the integers we could list um, just paste those numbers there and get rid of the rest of the list and again this method will work even if you have numbers like 2.73 but you're still looking for matches so this is a little bit more general method here so let me just center those so that they're a little bit easier to look at. Okay, so here comes the method. Once you've got your list of what all the possibilities are, we're going to use the match function in Excel. Let me go ahead and get rid of these top two little label columns here uh, so that we can see what we're doing a little better. So we're going to use the match function and what the match function will do, let me just type in here for example, equals match and it says what do we want to look up Let's look up the number 1. So I'm going to click over here in cell A2. So it's going to find where the number 1s are in a column. And so I'm going to hit comma. 
I'm going to tell it where to look for the number one over here. And I'm going to, to make copying and pasting my formulas a little easier later, since these three columns here are different lengths, I'm going to make my array as long as the longest one. That's going to make copying and pasting this formula a little easier in just a second. So these blanks won't hurt anything. So it's going to look at all these, all these cells for the number one and comma, what kind of match type do you want? Well, I want to match zero, which is an exact match. We want to look for the number one, not something close to the number one. Okay. Now when I hit enter, I get an NA, an error. Why an error? Because it couldn't find the number one in that list. So if it doesn't find a number in a list, it's going to give us this error. If it does find a number in the list, let's uh, copy this formula over to another cell over here. But before we copy it, when we copy it to the right, we, we don't want it to change the fact that it's looking in column A. So we're going to put a dollar sign on the A there. And so when we copy this formula to the right, it's still going to look in cell A, or column A, for what to look up. And when we co copy this formula down, we don't want it to change this range that it's looking at um, from G1 to G12. So I'm going to put number signs on the 1 and the 12. This changes it to an absolute reference instead of a relative reference. I'm not going to go into the details of that right here. All this is going to allow me to do is copy this formula to the right and also co copy this formula down. What have we just done? Well, this is telling me that um, the number does no, 1 does not appear in column A that it does appear in column B, and more than that, the number one appears in the second position. Now, our the, the person who asked the question said he doesn't care about where it occurs, he just wants to know if it occurs, okay? So we're going to modify the formula that we just made a little bit um, to get rid of this. We just want to know if it occurs, but not where it occurs. How do we do that? Here's my proposal. Let's change this match formula. Let's add something to it. And I'm going to add an if statement. And this if statement is going to say if. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look to see if there's an error. To see if it's missing, right? Because if it's not there, it's going to give us that error. So the function in Excel to do that is if is error. So if, open parentheses, is error, open parentheses, and then that whole match thing here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this because we're going to, no, we, we actually don't need that anymore. We're just looking to see if that match is, a, uh, is an error or not. Um, close parentheses. So if that match function in the parentheses is an error, then what do we want it to do? Well, I'm going to tell it to return the number 0, meaning it didn't find it. So comma 0, if there's an error, tell me it's not there, 0. Comma, if it is there, let's call that a 1. So if there's an error, return a 0, if not. So if it's not there, give us a 0. If it is there, give us a 1. Close parentheses, enter. And now, because of the dollar signs we put in there, we can copy this formula right, we can copy it down, and what we have are a bunch of zeros and ones that are going to tell us um, it's not in column A, it is in column B, it is in column C. Now, if we want to know how many times, here's this column here, how many times a number is repeated in the columns, then all we have to do is add these numbers up. So equals sum, highlight these three, hit enter. That two tells us that um, this the number one repeats twice, and we can copy that down, right? So now all, all we have to do is copy this down all the way, and any, any uh, answer here that just has a one, that means it's not really a repeat, it only occurs one time. But if there's a two or a three, 
that tells us that that number is re repeated two or three times. Now, what if you're just interested in the repeats? That's easy as well. Let's just highlight the columns. Actually, we can just highlight this one column and go to Data, Filter. And we want to click the down arrow that was just created when we hit Data Filter. And we want to not select all. We want to select all except for the ones because we're just interested in the repeats. So we left the number two and three checked. We unchecked the number one. And here you go. This is a list of the numbers that repeats. And this tells you how many times they repeat. And if you are additionally interested in which columns the, uh, the twos repeat in, you can check here and you can see, well, it repeats, it's in columns B and C because there are ones there, okay? So that's my solution to this problem. Hopefully that'll work for you. This has been an interesting Excel exercise. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or question in the section below.